Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's second Friday food, wine, and travel show with the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association. We love these shows because we get to chat with travel writers from around the world uh, who talk about their adventures. They talk about writing and all kinds of good stuff. So I encourage you to go to the association's website. We call them IFTWA, by the way. It's ifwtwa.org. Today, we're going to talk about how to get free flights and travel cool. rooms. Yeah, yeah very exciting. Uh, we're going <laughs> to chat with award-winning travel writer, Deborah Schroeder, who is in one of our old stomping grounds in San Diego. I encourage you to go to her website. It is travelingwellforless.com. So welcome, Deborah. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it, ladies. No, it's, it's good fine. to have you on. And, and <laughs> how is San Diego doing? Great. Um, as you guys know, uh, San Diego, we have mostly 70 all the time, but those rare days, sometimes it's kind of chilly or like we like to call it California cold <laughs> mm. <laughs> when it's yeah. mid sixties and we're like, oh, we got to bundle up. <laughs> yeah, we, we know about that feeling, but you know, you're at North San Diego, which is beautiful. You got the ocean, the countryside. I think there's something yeah, it's so cool. Northern California, Northern uh, San Diego has got like desert mountains, beach country. I mean, everything you've got everything there. So that's awesome. Awesome place to be. Tell us a little bit before we get into the free flights, which we all want to know about how to get free flights, free rooms, how to get into all those rewards programs. And you've got a great article and everyone it's up on blend radio and tv.com. So you'll be able to see it there. But what got you started in the world of travel writing? Oh, okay. So travel writing. Um, I'd always wanted to be a writer. I was on the paper in high school. I was the editor and I wrote articles and I had some things published in high school, but I didn't think I could make a living doing it. And so you, you know, people tell you, oh, go to jobs that you can make a living. So I pursued other things. And it wasn't until um, 2009 that I finally said, okay, let's, let's try this again. And, and with me, <laughs> my biggest fear of not trying it sooner was fear of rejection. I think mm -hmm. As most sure. writers, we have that fear, right? What if our stuff isn't good enough? I'm, I'm one of those type of people. I, I don't have a huge amount of self -defense. And so uh, it finally took me some nerve to submit something and that, that got published. And then from there, I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can make a living at writing. <laughs> so that's how it started. Well, it's interesting because you tend to travel uh, through, you like luxury travel, right? So you mm -hmm. like to go to all these exotic places. You've traveled, what, 48 countries? Is it how many countries? No, have 40, I got that right? 48, yeah, 48. I might, I might have to update that, but wow. I'm bad wow. about updating. I'm used yeah. to everyone saying, I've been to 48 states. I haven't done Hawaii <laughs> and Alaska yet, but it's 48 countries mm -hmm. or wow. and five continents. And, and so you've done more than that. I, th I think so. I added a couple new countries recently. And so I do have to update that. <laughs> That's mm. cool, though. So you've it's traveled cool. a lot, obviously, but a lot of it is you're managing to use these reward systems to get, you know, free flights, uh, free hotel rooms. So you're doing it in a very cost effective way. And it feels really good to be in a luxurious place. That, mm -hmm. You know, hey, I scored a deal. This is really cool. How did that start where you decided, hey, I'm going to focus on, on that as part of your travels and what you're doing with your website? So that started, my husband and I took a trip to Tahiti in 94. And we used a travel agent and she booked us in business class and we earned all these miles. And I was like, wow, you can earn all these miles and they um, you can turn them into free flights and stuff like that. And then shortly after, American had this promotion with Kellogg where you could earn 250 miles for a box of cereal. So it was cereal, <laughs> neutral grain bars, and pudding cups. And so I'm at the grocery store and I'm just tossing cereal boxes into my cart because I'm like, ooh, 250 miles, 250 miles. I'm just thinking, okay, all the free flights, right? And my That's husband funny. is like, what are you doing? Because it was just the two of us and there's like 50 boxes of cereal. And he's thinking we're never going to be able to eat this. But I'm like, no worries. I'm going to donate it to the church. It's fine. 
And um, so then I went to go went to go get more. And he's like, you need to stop this because this is in 94. We didn't know anyone doing this. I didn't know there was a whole community because there actually are communities that that travel hack, but I hadn't found that little niche. I hadn't found my tribe. And so I'm like, okay, I'll stop doing this, which I regret because there are people who at that time earned like a million miles doing that. Wow. And I wish I would have done that, but, but yeah. you know, you always have hindsight Wait a minute. 2020. Yeah. I um, like so cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's really how the obsession started. Um, hmm. And then from there, every way I could figure out and devise to earn miles and points, I was on it. Um, I kind of have an obsessive personality when I launch onto something, I'm like into it. And like when I start reading a book, I have to read the entire series and start from the beginning. So the same with miles and points. I need to learn everything about that particular program and I need to deep dive. That's just my personality. So that's kind of mm -hmm. how it started. That's, you know, it's fun because, <laughs> you know, back in the day where our magazine started right where you are as a print mm -hmm. publication, and then it grew into being Southwest Blend, and we ended up printing um, in Vegas. And first we were in Laughlin, then in Vegas. And we weren't like big casino people, but then we did turn into casino people <laughs> because you're waiting for press checks. And then they're like, okay, now you can go and then you can come back. And all we know is you have to do all the press checks. So what do you do when you go back to a casino? Well, you're naughty. And next thing mm -hmm. you know, we started racking up all these points, uh, mm -hmm. all these reward programs. And one print job we did, we, we, we arrived that night and we'd had just, you know, one of those go to press weekends where you didn't sleep for 72 hours or so and then we I remember this press check we went and saw it mm. everything was fine but we went back to our hotel room I won some money which was nice. great I was like <laughs> it was like over a thousand dollars at that point and um, we were like oh this is really cool and then all of a sudden this huge storm monsoon storm hit Vegas mm. and we were stuck in and we saw like more press stuff going on we were stuck flooded. in Vegas for almost a whole week, not being yeah. able to get home in 29 Palms because of the, the big flooded. flash floods and all of this going on. So hmm. we're like, what are we going to do? We're stuck in Vegas. We didn't pay the entire, I mean, we didn't pay to gamble because hmm. we had the money just kept coming in. We kept winning <laughs> and the hotel rooms, we didn't pay for a hotel room for the entire time. I think it was the very last day we mm -hmm. each spent 20 or $40. I can't remember, you know, how much it was. And we bought like one lunch for that's the entire awesome. week. So I know that's, yeah. that's like very little compared to what you're talking about, but really a week in Vegas, you know, it, mm -hmm. we, there's, I mean, there's only so much you can gamble like for us, but and exactly. we're not high rollers. We're not like professional or like look at that funny little thing on the machine you know <laughs> so that's how but I thought mm -hmm. for a week to be able to be in Vegas was pretty awesome so it's kind of similar to that right with what yeah. you're talking about exactly mm. exactly cool okay so let's talk about you you had five different ways so let's start okay. with airlines because that's a whole new thing and I you know with COVID now kind of stuff well I don't know what to say about COVID because it can come and go but air flights have changed and did, did you see any changes in reward programs over the, the pandemic or did it kind of just stay the way it the way they are well one of the major changes american changed their uh loyalty program entirely so oh. their program just to sum it up in a nutshell they went from where to earn status you had to earn three different or two different segments like elite qualifying miles or elite qualifying dollars um or there's a third dollars seconds miles yeah so three sorry about that um but now it's all based on loyalty points and loyalty points are only earned based on the cost of your ticket so the more your ticket costs the more points you earn and the more points you earn also um gets multiplied by your status in the program. So basically they want people to spend a lot of money. So mm -hmm. you can still earn from other ways that, you know, we, we won't talk about in today's show, but I'll kind of allude to like advanced and intermediate travel hacking techniques. Um, <clears throat> but basically now they have the one criteria, you know, to earn the top tier status, you have to earn 200,000 loyalty points. 
That's wow. a lot, especially if you consider most people Yikes. are only earning by flights, but it's also allowed people who have never had status before to earn status if they can you know, spend that much money or earn it in other ways through partners and stuff like that. So that's one way some of the airlines have changed. Mm -hmm. Another way prior to this um, Ukraine-Russian conflict or war, whatever we want to call it, prices were very low. Um, mm -hmm. We're in summer now, so prices have gone up, but you could get round, round trip tickets from LA to Miami. So basically across country for less than $200. So, so friends were flying a lot during the pandemic. I was not, but some friends were flying quite a bit because airfare was so incredibly cheap. So. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah. Cause I, I, we saw people flying as well and they, they were like, Oh my gosh, I can get to Hawaii for like a hundred, 200 bucks or something. We we're like, what, mm -hmm. you know, or just, mm -hmm. you know, cross country or, you know, so it was a very economical way of travel. We travel by car cause that's, <laughs> we're on the road full time, but there will be times where we're going to have to fly to Alaska and Hawaii to get those other two States, you know, but uh, how do you get started in regards to, hey, I want to start earning free miles? So, uh, it's not necessarily always through a loyalty program with the airline. It seems like you can do it through credit cards from your article, uh, choosing the right card, right? And then also right. partner programs. Yeah. So, so the biggest thing before the first step is to sign up for a loyalty program, whether it's an airline or a hotel program, because until you sign up, you can't earn the airline miles or the hotel points. So the best oh, advice, okay. excuse me, sorry about that. The best advice is to pick the one that you think you're interested in. So a lot of people who only fly within the U.S. or, you know, will fly to Belize, Mexico, or the Caribbean, they're big fans of Southwest because Southwest has an amazing program and they have lots of flights and they have a generous cancellation policy. With Southwest, you can cancel your flight up to 10 minutes before departure wow. and you get that you get that money back as a credit. So if you bought their cheapest ticket, you can use that voucher and that's good for a whole year. Whereas if you bought a refundable ticket, you automatically get your money back. So there's lots of great benefits that way. So you pick the partner that you wanna work with, what like I mentioned, airline or hotel, and then sign up for their program. And then that way you'll start earning points. And as I mentioned, you can earn points without having to get on a plane or stay in a hotel through partners like car rentals, um, airline dining programs, which is my absolute favorite. And I'd love to talk more about that if you want to hear more sure, about sure. that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> do you want me to go into that now? Sure, or go, go for okay, it. Sure. Yeah. Airline dining programs is the, are the best and the, easy, the easiest, the fastest way to earn airline miles and hotel points. There's only two hotels that participate, Marriott, <clears throat> excuse me, Marriott and Hilton. Mm. Um, but in terms of airlines, most of the airlines participate, such as Alaska, American, Delta, JetBlue, Southwest, United, uh, Frontier, I'm trying to think who else participates. Um, even some of their international airlines also participate. So you go to their dining website and there are links in that article. And um, mm -hmm. so we'll be on the Big Blend website as well. And you just sign up. It's free to sign up. Sometimes they offer you bonus miles or points to sign up as a new member. And then when you dine, you can earn up to five miles per dollar. That includes your taxes and tips. So let's say you go um, to a restaurant and you spend hundred dollars just to make it easy, right? So that's a so if you're the basic member, you're only going to earn one mile per dollar spent. So that's a hundred dollars. But if you've earned enough to be like an advanced member you'll earn five miles per dollar. So that's 500 miles. So after several times going out to eat, that really adds up. Um, let's see. Uh, that's really and, cool because th this is, I love this whole thing because it's using your, you, you know, we budget, we all budget, but this is really being smart budgeting and really doubling your dollar, if you will, in, in different ways. I mean, this is mm -hmm. pretty cool, you know, so you choose according to partner, if you're going to go out, it's like, okay, it, we do that with gas buying gas we're like you know we have through our you know different credit cards it's like oh if you get gas here you're going to get so much off oh so i'm yeah. like oh well mm -hmm. a b a or b i'm going to go the one i'm going to get money off of so it's, it's very similar with that but exactly so you're exactly. going to get miles for an airline through eating out through one of their partners correct okay. and there are hundreds of partners and it doesn't have to be fancy restaurants it can even be fast food like 
you had mentioned the same city, like Wendy's participates. Mm -hmm. And there was another fast food chain that participated, even bars. So it's mm. fantastic. So whenever I'm going anywhere. <laughs> Every time traveling, you have a beer, you're getting a mile. Oh, totally. I mean, my time. husband doesn't <laughs> like, like it because I'll go, let's go out to eat. You're going to drink your way into the plane. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> but. <laughs> But so if you really want to maximize your miles and points, you'll, you'll look at the list of restaurants and only dine there. Um, and then you can even double dip, like what I like to call, because if you use a travel rewards card that has a category bonus for dining, not only will you earn the miles that you get from the airline for going to that restaurant, but you also get the bonus points from that credit card for going to a restaurant. That, this that is very oh. cool. So double dipping is good, even though, yes. that, yeah, George Costanza from Seinfeld would like that. <laughs> He's a double dipper. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so not that, the chip dip either. <laughs> not the chip dip either. No, no. This is, a, I think he would like this plan a lot. <laughs> so, so you get the credit card, right? So mm -hmm. there's the different ones that you can go and sign up for. So you need mm -hmm. to look for credit card offers that are travel. I know I get the, uh, I think it's a Marriott Bond. Bon voyage, but they keep sending offers like that all the time. So that's a good one. <laughs> if you like to stay at Marriott's, yes. I, re I recommend for people just starting in travel hacking that they get a card that offers transferable currency. And what I mean by that is that you can use those points for airlines or hotels because you want to get the best value for your buck, right? Mm. So if you get an airline or hotel branded card, you can usually only use those points for that particular airline or oh, that okay. hotel chain or their partners. So it limits you into that dynamic. Whereas if you get a card with transferable currency, like the Chase Sapphire Preserve, sorry, Chase Sapphire Preferred or Chase Sapphire Reserve or American Express Platinum card, they, those cards have transferable partners so you can transfer to both airline and hotels. So you get the most value for those points. So let's say you have enough free hotel nights or you're getting comp hotel nights or, or you're doing a house sit, right? So you don't need your accommodations. You only need your flights. So then you can use those points to cover your flights. But if you have your hotels, um, if, if you don't have your hotels covered, but somehow have your flights covered, or if you're driving, like you mentioned, when you're doing road tripping, then you can use those points to cover hotel rooms if you don't have a house sit. So it's great because you have multiple options versus just being locked in with one option, if that makes hmm. sense. I like that. I think that mm -hmm. makes more sense, uh, definitely, to have one that you can you know move around. And so when you're, you sign up for that, but you also talked about the importance of knowing where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's important to have a plan um, because there are lots of great sign up bonuses. Some, we just recently had one with the Southwest Companion Pass where you could earn the Companion Pass and 30,000 points. And people get excited when these big bonuses happen because they don't happen often and they just, you know, will jump and sign up for that card instead of taking the time to figure out, okay, where do I want to go? Where will that sign up bonus actually help me? you know, meet that goal? Can I use those miles or points to get to where I want to go? Because if you just sign up without having a plan, it's like when you, it's a similar analogy to if you're taking a road trip, right? You're not going to just mm -hmm. get, well, most people will not just get in the car and start uh -oh. driving, right? And figure, figure it out along the way because because you miss something, right? You may miss a great destination or a landmark or something mm. unique about a city if you don't take time to plan. So same with when you're travel hacking, you need to figure out where you want to go so you can be efficient and know which miles and points can mm. get you there. Otherwise, you'll have all the these miles and points currency and not be able to use it. Mm. Mm -hmm. You also make a point in your article about um, seasonality and when to go to places. Look, look at off season because that's when you get the deals. I think it's really important to do off season. Just it, it's you don't have it's as many the, crowds. It's yeah. good for the tourism industry too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, great point, Nancy. No, mm -hmm. I agree. I love off season travel because Lisa, you're totally right. There are no crowds, and the prices are cheaper. Mm -hmm. And then not only are the accommodations and flights cheaper, but also food at the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And you won't have to worry about reservations. And theoretically, 
gas prices are yeah. also cheaper. So <laughs> when, when, you, when you use these cards, are you looking, because you talk about, you know, use the credit card instead of the debit card, right? Because you could just pay it off, right? If mm-hmm. you, you use it, if you look at it and for good credit habits, pay it off, you know what Correct. I mean? And so when you look at, would you do things like, you know, put all your Amazon purchase listen I know everybody lives on Amazon from Nancy and I doing house sitting it's like you really we're pet sitters but we're really watching for the box boxes coming every day so you know would you put as much as you can even groceries and just regular non-travel things on that credit card to get miles or does it not work that way I do I put everything on my credit card, even <laughs> if it's only a dollar. I'm like, do you take credit card? And I'll charge everything on the card. And then I also try to be strategic and um, use a card that will give me a bonus. Like for Amazon, several of my cards are offering five times points for my Amazon purchases through the end of the month. So instead of using the card that I would normally default to, I'll switch it to use one of those cards that give me even more points. Because, you know, it's an extra way to get points for something you're already spending anyway. Mm -hmm. And you made a a good point. Yes. You definitely want to pay your bill off every month because Mm -hmm. paying interest to earn Mm -hmm. miles and points negates the value that you earn from your miles and points. It's never a good idea. So if someone um, has trouble managing their debt, I don't recommend they start travel hacking and getting travel rewards cards because one um, sometimes they might have trouble ma- meeting the minimum signup bonus. And then two, if they're not paying their, as I mentioned, if they're not paying their balances in full, they're going to pay interest. So it's, it's not, um, not the ideal situation. Right. right. Yeah. So that's, yeah, you need to keep it, use it as a debit card. Basically. Exactly. Use it like mm-hmm. a debit card. Um, but the best thing is you guys, as well, I'm assuming, as most people know, with credit cards, you have a higher level protection in case something happens than you do with a debit card. So mm-hmm. there is that those little financial benefits as well, in mm-hmm. addition to the perks. So. Yes. I, yeah. So here's all the perks. So this is really cool. So where, where what has been like the biggest non-purchase that you've made with your your <laughs> points like what has been the wildest thing like oh my god I got so many points and I managed to go all the way here like a dream oh. thing like what's the craziest one um so we did a well we remodeled my husband likes to call it we added a wing to our house because we <laughs> in lo- we doubled the size of our house and uh I convinced the contractor to let us pay for the lumber for the, for the remodel on our credit card, rather than (laughs) he writing a check because it was, it all washed out the same. And then he didn't have to have any upfront money and he was okay with that. And the lumber company was okay with that. And there was no additional fees. So as you can imagine, um, we we added like like 1500 square feet. So that was a lot of lumber. So, wow. (laughs) So that was great. Um, some of our favorite places, like The one I like to use a lot for a great example, um, we did a first class trip to Australia. And so our flights, first class from the United States to Australia, as well as our inter-Australia flights, our accommodations, we stayed at really fancy hotels like the Park Hyatt Sydney, the Hilton Sydney, and the Radisson Blue Sydney. These, These are, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars a night, you know, sorry about that, ranging in from like four to $800 a night type hotels. And then all our meals, our transportation, accommodations by using miles and points, um, that trip, that trip, how we not use miles and points would have cost $26,000. But because we use miles and points, I believe it was like two, just a little over $200. Wow. So, okay, so you that's, beat our that's Vegas been my thing. favorite. See, our <laughs> Vegas thing is nothing. I knew it. As that's I no, the Vegas like, thing is nothing. great because Vegas, you know, Vegas is expensive, but, but yeah, it so does. You can, get in, <laughs> you can yeah. get in you trouble. Can. In trouble <laughs> you can get in trouble in Vegas. And I know when they say, oh, give us your credit card. I'm like, mm, I don't know. But now I'm thinking, mm. no, wait, let's get strategic. So it's, it is about yeah. being strategic and you have to really look at who's doing and what. So, you know, when we get all these credit card offers and you just toss them, start looking at them and going, okay, wait, is this the right one? one to do so you want transferable money on that card or transferable yeah. points P- points that transfer points. to airlines and hotels are usually the best bet especially mm-hmm. when you first get started that way you have the most most opportunities 
Mm, okay. Wow. And you want the sapphire. This is a good one. The Chase, uh, the Chase sapphire. sapphire Preferred and the Chase mm-hmm. Sapphire Reserve if you want and, to go. And American Chase Express. And American yeah. Express Platinum are also good. Capital yes. One Venture are also good because mm-hmm. they have transferable points as well. But they mm-hmm. don't have as many programs as American Express and mm-hmm. Chase does. So, mm-hmm. wow. so do, you, do you, like, you know, mm-hmm. we do budgeting and things. Are you always like, I mean, how how often do you look at what's going on with rewards? And I mean, are you doing this daily? Is this something that you're just like, what's going on? I mean, um, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's just say I spend way too much time looking at miles and points and trying to figure out, you know, I, I, I pretty much know which cards to use. So that's good. But then I will also look at different opportunities. Like my husband's laughing and I wish I could show you a photo because our refrigerator is jam packed with meal kits because the beginning of the year you can earn bonus miles when you order from, you know, the meal kit companies, yeah, yeah. subscription services. And so, as I mentioned earlier, American changed their loyalty program. And now you have to earn all these points, which we didn't have to earn that many. It's more than twice as amount, the amount we had to earn before. So I didn't want to spend $15,000, right? So I thought, okay, I'll I'll buy these meal kits. And most of the meal kits are anywhere from $50 to $90. And each meal kit, I'm earning like several thousands of miles. So so my fridge is packed and we had to bring out our backup fridge to put the other meal (laughs) kits in. And another one got delivered today. So I'm like, okay. (laughs) Okay, so now she doesn't have to cook. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Everything's handled on this. So, well, yeah, because you can feel like you're traveling when you get meal kits. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Somebody just said, yeah. So do, are you a coupon person? I used to be big into coupons. I mm-hmm. don't do couponing as much, but I'm not um, the coupon person that has, you know, the couponer that has like the five bottles of Tide or whatever, <laughs> that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I played the coupon game to get my grocery bill down and I have been known to shop the, the sales section. I cannot I cannot avoid the target <laughs> sales section. <laughs> well, hey, everybody wants to save money. Hey, exactly. listen, I got a beautiful like artisan loaf of Italian bread for 99 cents the other day. Who can, nice. I mean, come on, when do you get that? <laughs> exactly. Like, and it's there. I'm going, well, why am I buying this when I could have this? I'm going for this. It, and it, does it change for you by doing these programs kind of, in a way take you to places that you may not have already gone like ever thought of going not just in the destinations but using partners like maybe eating in restaurants you may not have done before and then going oh i i kind of like this one you know yeah i do think it yeah i do think it expands my horizons um because i have been to different countries and places i wouldn't have you know, in my quest to stay at certain types of hotels, because I have points with those hotels, Mm -hmm. then I'll go, okay, like this particular hotel is in that city. So I'll stay there because my stay will be free as opposed to spending cash. Mm -hmm. Um, But that all, but you also have the, the negative aspect, because sometimes those of us who play this game, we sometimes get locked into where, oh, I can't go to a different city because there are no hotels that I can okay. use points from. So, so you have to be careful to not, you know, get sucked it's, into that trap yeah. and you have to, you have to be open <laughs> and mm. flexible. So. so you have to have the balance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, Lisa, you need just to like balance. you said about paying it off every month and all of, you know, being, so you have to be diligent and, yes. and yeah, make sure it makes sense for you, you know, cause exactly. sometimes it's cheaper to just go get the hotel room. Exactly. <laughs> and like, and, and that's, you brought up a great point, Lisa. So a lot of people ask me because, um, because there are people who do travel hacking and though some of us are like me, we like the value luxury experiences, but I also, I just like value. So Mm -hmm. I don't mind staying at a modest, you know, budget hotel if, if Mm -hmm. I can use my points and it'd be for free. Um, And so some people though only want to use their miles and points for the luxury experiences where other people will only use it for like flying economy because then they can get more trips out of it. And, and the best thing about miles and points and travel hacking is you can do it however way you want to do it. Mm. And people forget that it's money, it's a currency. And so you should feel comfortable spending your money, whether it's cash or miles Mm -hmm. and points exactly as you want to. But a lot of people in this, um, 
in this game sometimes get wrapped up in the I need to get the best value without realizing the best value is what works for you, you know, for mm. whatever situation you're in. So yeah, mm. see, this is like gambling. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the the casino. It is a bit. It is a bit. <laughs> It is somewhat, but you don't have to really lose any money. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You don't if you do it right. And it, this is, you know, when when you think like even, you know, the hotels, like for Nancy and I, as we travel, you know, we, we have a car, we're a loaded car. And so we'll stay in like hotels where we can park the car and I don't have to take everything out every single night because it's a pain. Mm-hmm. Even if you have someone help you, it's just not the way it's just nobody knows where we are when. <laughs> don't rob my car. But, you know, but it's you stay in certain places and you do get rewards just even from the basic hotels um but what about things like uh, all the otas like uh, hotels.com expedia.com booking.com do any of those fit in with what you're doing is it worth it if they do so yes and no so hotels.com um they have their own program where you get a free stay after your 10th stay and it used to be that value of the 10th stay could be any value. So there's a lot of gamers in, in travel hacking. So a lot of people would book really cheap hostels and stuff like that for the first nine hotels and then book a fancy hotel for the 10th one. That way they got that for free, but hotels.com kind of figured that out. So now it's the <laughs> average of the cost of your last hotels. So that's a great program. If you, if you don't really, if you want to get travel benefits, but don't really want to have to sign up for all the different reward programs, mm-hmm. or if you travel places where there aren't any, you know, um, brand name hotels. So it's a great way to get free nights that way as well. Um, but when you book through like hotels.com or Expedia, because they're OTAs and for people listening who aren't familiar with that term, online travel agencies, if you do happen to have status in the hotel programs, that stay won't count to your status. So you um, you won't get that hotel night or you won't get the benefits from your status for that. There's a whole world out there hmm. <laughs> just waiting wow. for yeah. you to be seen, to, to not have to pay huge rates, you know, but it does, it is about, all about travel and everyone benefits from it. The hotels, the tourism industry, right. mm-hmm. um, it really is. And it's, a, these are all about loyalty, right? That's really exactly. at the end of the day, it's about loyalty, which helps everybody, you know, and the tourism world, I know travel is really picked up, but I think it's still going to need help through the next few years. We're still going to, it's, to you know recruit, what I mean? We're still yeah. getting back on our feet again. Right. So I think these programs really help with that. So the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association, we love this because we, I mean, this is the first time we've actually got into, you know, the whole hotel savings, airline, you know, save on flights and all of that. Um, so it's cool. So we always chat with someone, so, you know, it's different destinations or how do you get started in travel writing? So we love these shows, but I know you've been a member of IFTWAR, the International Food Wine Travel Writers Association, for several years. What are some of the benefits for you as a writer to be a member with them? So I love, um, <clears throat> Corey Solomon does a great program. Her, I don't remember Dave's last name, but they have a great webinar series where you can learn about different destinations and different things like SEO and stuff like that. So that's a great perk and benefit for IFTWA members. Um, they also have an annual conference, but every year I'm traveling somewhere, <laughs> so I couldn't make it, except for um, this, the one that was just canceled last November. I was excited because I actually was flying in to Tampa, which oh. was going to be near the conference. I thought, perfect, I'll hop down there, and it's at a Hyatt oh. place, and I've got mm. points. I don't have to pay the hotel <laughs> rate, you know, which is bad for the conference, obviously, but mm. good for me because I think it was only like 5,000 points a night. So, so, um, so there are a lot of great benefits as an if 12 member, and there's a great group of people. If you've got to, I mean, I'm sure Lisa and Nancy, you've got mm. to meet people in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of us, there was actually a, a group of us going to lunch today in San Marcos up here, but because I've got this, oh, wait, wait, sorry. We're going to have to cut this portion out. <laughs> <'Cause it's a day. laughs> sorry about that. Um, so some of us get together on our own and some of us also get together under the if brand or flag if you will mm-hmm. call it and we'll go out to different hotels and restaurants and type things like that oh that's cool okay. and then you learn from each other yes exactly oh, 
that's awesome. That's awesome that you all connect and get to meet up. And mm. yeah, it's it's really grown over the years. The association has really grown and flourished. And um, it's just been awesome to see. We've been involved with the organization, with the shows for long time now as long as like none of us can remember how long so it's, <laughs> mm. it's all right just means that we're doing things <laughs> we're yeah, all good. traveling and doing things so really a great to have you on the show everyone you can go to travelingwellforless.com and mm. if you're a travel writer photographer or destination or travel service go check out ifwtwa.org and of course keep up with us on bigblendradio.com we air our food wine travel show with iftwa every second Tuesday and every second Friday. Friday's for the writers. Every Tuesday, we cover the destinations themselves. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Lisa and Nancy. Thanks so much. Thank you.